thanks to everybody for coming out. Um, we had a pretty big turnout at 12. We kind of weren't expecting anybody at 3, but it looks like we have a pretty good turnout at 3, too. So thanks, everybody, for coming out. Uh, for those of you that don't need, know me, I'm Marshall. I'm the owner of Going Gear. And uh, for those of you that don't know Don, this is Don, uh, YouTube personality extraordinaire. He told me not to introduce him as that, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so over the past few weeks, you know, anybody that lives in the southeast or the Atlanta area, um, if you weren't stuck in the snow, you know a lot of people that were. And we wanted to have Don come down here, and we were just going to have him come down here and kind of meet and greet, because uh, he's got a lot of fans out there. And that's usually enough, but we thought, you know, maybe we'll go a little bit further and teach some people some stuff. So we decided that... We're going to teach people how to build go bags or get home bags or bug out bags or whatever you want to call them. Um, not necessarily for the end of the world, but for the stuff that does happen. You know, people getting stuck in their cars and having to walk home. Don told a story about the guy in Auburn that maybe we'll tell that story again. And, you know, there's a pretty good chance that at some point you'll probably need some water, you probably need a light, you probably need a heat source, uh, that kind of stuff. So that's what we're going to talk about is, is how to build a bag to get yourself and your family and everybody home safely. Um, do you want to? So the big thing is, we wanna, and this is what I always do to base all of my uh, setups on, is the rule of threes. And some of you probably heard the rule of threes, but it's it's actually three seconds without hope. you got to have a plan. you got to say, you know what, I can make it. I mean, and you might say, well, that sounds kind of silly. But in a really bad situation, sometimes the mind can play a lot of tricks on you. So you really need to just go ahead and say, you know what, whatever happens, I'm going to do my best. And so... And then there is three minutes without air, three hours without, um, without extreme temperatures or in extreme temperatures, three hours. If you get an extreme cold or even an extreme heat, you can dehydrate and, and die. And so, and again, these threes are not necessarily specifically threes. They're just close and as much as you can function. Um, you have three days without water, three weeks without food. You need medical assistance in some form at all times because that can happen at any time. So taking the rule of threes, again, it's three seconds without hope, three minutes without air, three hours in extreme temperatures, three days without water, three weeks without food. Those are the basics and you really should base any kind of pre preparation on that scenario. So a lot of this stuff is based on we're not necessarily going for the smallest or the lightest. It's going to be the stuff that's most appropriate for getting home. You know, weight and stuff like that, it is a factor. We're not giving you the biggest and heaviest stuff, but it's also not the smallest and lightest because it's something you're going to have in your truck or your, the trunk of your car. Um, so you're walking home with it once or twice isn't as big of a deal as if you're on a three-week backpacking trip. You know, then you want all your titanium and, and ultralight stuff. Um, and then we got a, a couple of different sets of stuff here. So one is going to be the basic. So if you look on the, on the sheet, you've got the basic list. And that's going to be not the cheapest stuff on the market, but the least expensive that we think is quality, reliable stuff. Um, the stuff that we would want to use ourselves. And then the premium is just if you want the absolute best stuff, that's it. Your backpack is your transport. I mean, that's what you're transporting the gear. It's the container for your gear. Um, and it really, you know, it doesn't have to be super expensive, but it really does need to be decent quality. And, uh, you know, if a pack fails on you, it can really be a nightmare. And I'll tell you, I just uh, knowing from walking home from school when I was younger, you know, having a really bad backpack, it's not only, uh, it can be not only uncomfortable, but it can wear you down. And so having a good, well thought out pack is just essential and something that'll, that'll stay in good condition. And it's just like this Osprey. This is a really no, exceptionally nice pack. And, uh, and it's good quality. It's going to hold up. It's going to, uh, for years, it'll hold up. Uh, and, you know, some of mine, I do a lot of Maxpedition. I really like Maxpedition. And uh, it's a little more tactical and a little more subdued. But whatever you do, you know, sometimes you can't necessarily afford something like this or even Maxpedition. But get a good pack and you can always upgrade. So, but just buying at least the best, the pack is really important to, to hold your gear. Um, one thing I wanted to mention really quick is for your friends and family, if you're looking for something just super basic to give them, even the basic pack, you build it out, including the backpack and everything, it's going to be a couple hundred bucks. I know probably not everybody wants to spend a couple hundred bucks on everybody they know, but these little things right here from AMK, they call it their survival medic. 
you have shelter, you have an emergency blanket, you have a way to start a fire, you have compass, duct tape, uh, whistle, safety stuff in here, first aid stuff, a lot of stuff in this little kit, and they're only 20 bucks, somewhere around there, about 20 bucks. So they're pretty inexpensive, great stocking stuff or something to give to people. If you want them to just have just super basics, they'll at least keep them protected and able to keep themselves warm and notify other people where they are and everything. So this is at an absolute minimum. Um, we'll start going through the list. So the first thing we have on there is shelter. Um, shelter is important. I think that's one of the most important things, uh, especially like when we were talking about people stuck out in the snowstorm. It took me about three and a half hours to get about three miles. It took my wife nine hours to get about 15 miles. I talked to people that were stuck on the road for 12 to 15 hours. I mean, everybody knows we're not equipped for snow in the south. Um, I mean, I saw a lot of people walking home, and it was in the 20s that day, and they're in penny loafers, slacks, and their button-up shirt. You know, they have no jacket in their car or anything like that. So, shelter, a way to keep yourself out of the elements, you know, not that we have blizzards all that often. The shelter for me is more of uh, in the extreme heat. So if your car breaks down in the middle of nowhere, you want to be able to, a way to be able to shelter yourself from the sun. And, you know, if you need to in the cold, a way to keep yourself warm in the sun. So a couple of things that we have on there. Um, I don't know if anybody showed up at the point where we still had the giveaways. Maybe a few of you did. But uh, we had, the vendors were nice enough to give us a bunch of, uh, we had AMK, these emergency blankets, they gave us the CRKT eating tools. Uh, Yuko gave us a bunch of waterproof matches to get everybody started. Um, but this is a nice emergency blanket. It's the kind of space blanket that everybody knows, a little bit higher end. So it's more durable, a um, little bit higher quality. So this is going to be your basic one. And then the premium one, Don actually did a review on the bivy. So you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, this is just the uh, SOL Escape Bivy, and it's like an emergency space blanket inside, but it has a nice shell to it, and you can use this a number of times. In fact, I was, um, uh, well, I demonstrated using it, but there was a guy that had used this like four or five times, taking it out into the wilderness, and I think they're doing some pretty serious uh, hiking. In fact, you were talking about yeah, we, Appalachian Trail. Yeah, we talked to customers that are using that as their sleeping bag on AT hikes. So, I mean, it, it holds up really, really well. It's almost like a Tyvek kind of material. So it's really durable, definitely reusable. These materials, they are reusable if you take care of them, maybe a few times. Um, but then folding it up, getting it back in the bag is kind of a pain. So if you want something that's truly reusable, that's that kind of stuff. And this will cover you completely, which is pretty cool. And it's a breathable material. That's always been everybody's complaint about the emergency blankets or AMK's old emergency bivvies. Um, you literally woke up in a puddle of your own sweat. Which, you know, you're still alive, so that's awesome, but, you know, you're, you're, you're in a puddle of your own sweat, not the most comfortable thing, and then you have to get out of that. So if you're in a, a, a situation where it's cold out, then you start talking about hypothermia because you're drenched. Um, so they came out with a breathable one, so it takes care of a lot of those issues. Um, and another thing that, that uh, is good to carry is they make a sport utility blanket that's a tarp type material. And I know, Don, you always have a tarp in your truck. I always have a tarp in my truck. It's good for carrying stuff, covering stuff, you know, for yourself. One side is uh, orange. The other side is the reflective material. So you can reflect body heat back at you as well as use it for signaling. Maybe you're in an area where, you know, you've got a plane flying overhead. You're in the middle of nowhere. You get your truck stuck out somewhere when you're hunting. Orange is the international color for emergency and signaling and distress. So you can use something like this to help people let you know where they are. And again, tarps are just, they're useful to have, regardless of your truck. Even keeping rain off, if you get stuck somewhere where you really need to shelter yourself from rain, a good rain park is nice, but this would really add to that. So. I forgot to touch on the assumptions. So these are all important things to keep in mind when we're talking about all of this stuff. Uh, all of these are assuming that you're preparing for a single person. You're preparing for yourself. So if you have loved ones that are going to be with you, children, a lot of time people forget about pets. You know, a lot of people consider pets their family members. Keep in mind that you need to have the stuff for them as well. Um, it's a good idea. I want to touch yeah, on that good. specifically. We had a question. A girl uh, asked if uh, you were preparing a bug out bag, should you have your kids also have some? And I, I, there was a. We were down at Disney World a couple of years ago. It's been four or five years ago actually. 
and our youngest son, he was really small, he was playing, we were sitting, and just kind of taking a break, and he was across this large paved area, and he was just kind of running around, and then all of a sudden, the doors of this theater, which we didn't realize, it opened, and about 500 people came out, and there he was on the other side of them, and I mean, there was nothing we could do, we weren't even expecting it, it was like, boom, and I made a beeline through that crowd and got to him, you know, just to make sure he was okay, and sure enough, he was fine, but one of the things that, especially if you have young children or small children, or even teenagers, is to have something for them and to teach them just some basic survival skills. Because as much as you think you've got things under control, as much as you feel like you have them by the hand, things happen and they can be separated. So really, and even if you're a couple or whatever, you know, having each of you having just the means at least to survive will at least give them a chance if they get separated from you. And then hopefully you'll be able to recoup and find them again later. It's, it's great if you have all these skills and you know how to do all this stuff. What if you're the one that's hurt? What if you're the one that needs help? So teach your significant other uh, the basics and, you know, have them, have them practice all this stuff with them. Uh, the next thing we have on there, the, the assumptions, you're going to have a vehicle or a building for shelter. So you're going to be in an urban area. If you're not in an urban area, again, I'll use the example of hunting. We have a lot of hunting customers or hunter customers. Um, take additional shelter. So like a tent, a hammock kind of thing, just so you have a way to get yourself out of the elements beyond just a tarp or something like that. Um, make sure you go through your bag. This is something that a lot of people are guilty of, is you have things that expire in here. You, medications, if you have medications in there, food, um, water, you know, water in plastic bottles in a hot car, it's going to start leaching chemicals into the water, not the best for you. I'd probably still drink it if I were going to die of dehydration, but you know, swap that stuff out. Anything that can expire, make sure you keep it updated. And uh, one thing that I'm super guilty of is scavenging. So I'm really bad about pulling stuff out of my pack to do classes like this and to make a video or to use it myself. So make sure if you take something out, you replace it. I mean, it's awesome if you have enough where you can, you know, have your stuff that you use and your go bag and your go bag for your significant other. We understand this stuff gets expensive. So I mean, if you need to pull something out of any of your bags, make sure you put it back. Um, and also, uh, make sure that if it's ever in a situation where it can get stolen, take it with you. Um, we actually had one of our guys here that had his Jeep broken into, and he lost, how much was it, about $1,000 worth of stuff? It was a Max Bishop Falcon 2, and it had about $1,000 worth of gear in it. Yeah. Everything from flashlights to headlamps to extra right. headlamps yeah. magazines. And, and this was behind our old store in a nice area of town. You know, we never had any problems with theft or break-ins or anything it's like, like that. In the it was like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So just, uh, you know, we were talking about the comfort of a backpack and everything. That's another reason. So it's not that big of a deal when you get out, just throw it on your back. And uh, just so you, or at least keep it obscured from view. You know, keep it under a truck seat. A lot of people will just throw a jacket over it. Just don't make it an obvious target because a lot of people will see a nice bag and think, you know, there's probably a nice knife in there. There's probably a, maybe a gun in there and some stuff that's worth some money. So don't, don't make it a target. Well, and one thing about what it costs is, you know, sometimes you put, you're making an investment here. You're making an investment that, you know, will last you for a good long time. And you may spend a couple hundred dollars. You, know, you could spend up to whatever. But once you buy that, if you're ever in a situation where you rely on that, it would be worth $10,000 to you. And, you know, take your kit, get it together. Once it's done, it's done. You know, you buy insurance, you have all these things already. So having this together and even a $200 bag of just good gear that could save your life, the essentials, it's definitely an investment, and it's not going to go away after one year. Yeah, there's a few things that you'll need to switch out, but typically all the more expensive stuff, it'll last you. Once you've done it, you've done it. So the next thing we have on there is heat. So obviously that was a concern for a lot of people recently. Um, and there's some pretty easy ways to keep yourselves warm. I'm sure everybody has seen the hot hands. You know, these things last up to 18 hours. You know, they're oxygen uh, activated, so you get them out of the packaging and then just kind of shake them up and they start working. Um, use them on your hands, so you make sure you have your dexterity in your hands. That's something we touched on a lot in the last class. I don't know if anybody of you have ever fallen into really cold water. Your hands are worthless. You get out and you're shaking and you can't move your hands. Um, so being able to quickly warm up your hands is essential. You know, you have to start a fire or use any of your gear or get medication out or anything like that. 
having warm hands that you can actually use is, is super important. Um, and then if you're in a closed area where you can actually give me the uh, where you can actually stay, this thing is a little candle lantern. If you've ever seen Yuko's candle lantern, this, this is what it is. Um, you just use his candles. This thing puts out 1,900 BTUs of heat, which is a lot. That'll heat up a small area. It'll heat up a closet or a bathroom or a vehicle. Um, and the candles burn for nine hours. So you can have one of these in your vehicle and it'll keep you warm. You know, if you run out of gas or the battery runs out or anything like that, you've got a way to, to keep yourself warm. Or if you have to leave your vehicle, you've still got a way to keep yourself warm. Um, Zippo hand warmers. I didn't, we got that. Uh, I didn't really understand it because they don't burn. They kind of smolder. These things are awesome. <laughs> we, we brought these in. These have been one of the most popular products we've had this winter. It uses Zippo fuel and uh, it has a chemical reaction in there that just to keep your hands warm. Um, so something that's a little bit more reusable than the hot hands. And uh, you can use this just to warm up your body parts and keep your hands warm and whatever you need to do. Um, Another thing we have on there is, is water. Water is important. However you need to keep water uh, that you're comfortable with, um, do whatever you're comfortable with. I personally, I just go to Walmart, get a gallon jug of water. I keep that in my truck at all times. That's the thing that I'm absolutely the worst about, about scavenging. You know, my daughter's thirsty or I'm thirsty or my wife's thirsty. We'll open it up and then all of a sudden my water's gone. And if I were in a situation, I don't have my water. Um, I know, Don, you said you keep a, a water bottle. Yeah, I keep a water bottle. A little bit small, thinner than this, but I keep one at all times. And, of course, um, have a way to filter water, which obviously we're going to get to in just a second. But having a container for water is very important. And, uh, you know, because if you're in a, a situation, well, especially with the ice and snow, you could actually melt it. But uh, having a container for water is important. And like you talked about the rule of threes, that's at the point where you're no longer alive you're going to be very uncomfortable far before that point. So if you don't have any water to drink, I mean, you think about your, your hiking home for 12 hours, which we had some customers here that had to do that. We've had talked to a lot of people that had to do that. Um, my wife had to hike through our neighborhood in the snow and ice, seven months pregnant, to get home. Um, so having water, having some, some food just to keep yourself hydrated and a little bit of energy. And uh, for food, that's another one of the personal preference things. You want stuff that has a, a good long shelf life and um, high, high calorie density. And we were talking about before, one of our favorite things, my favorite thing is peanut M&Ms. You got your fat, you got your sugar, you got your protein. It's nice and compact. Uh, Cliff Bars, the dehydrated meals that we have back there, super long shelf life, MREs, anything you can do just to have some calories, keep yourself in, with energy. Um, especially you have to hike home for nine or ten hours or longer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so a, a lot of this stuff, like we kind of said, was based around assuming one to three days out. So you know, try to keep a little bit of food in there. And the king size bag of M and M's, you can get them like three pounds. That's probably <laughs> seven, eight thousand calories in that thing. So you can you can pretty easily get enough for three or four days in a relatively compact size. Anybody who's obviously been inside this store knows how light, how, how important light is to us. Uh, so I think light is super important and hands-free light I think is essential in these kind of situations. So headlamps or at least something that has a clip where you can clip it to your pocket or clip it to your pack. It's where you can have your hands, you can use them to get inside your pack or do something with your vehicle. Um, so we have some different options on there. I mean we sell probably 200 different headlamps. But uh, at the most basic level, you know, you've got these things which are just 12 bucks, but they work. You know, they put out light, you know, you'll be able to see stuff in front of you, you'll be able to see yourself walking, you can adjust the angle. And at the higher end, you know, we've got 60, 70, $100 headlamps, a um, little bit higher quality, higher output, better battery life, that kind of stuff. So all kinds of different options. Uh, and another thing we really like for light, we've been selling a lot of these recently because everybody's coming in looking for flashlights for their vehicles. And we've been selling a lot of these because, well, for one thing, it runs for six hours on high, and it's a thousand lumens, which is a pretty decent output. Has a few different uh, outputs on it, but this entire bottom part of the body is a battery pack, and it has USB out. 
So we're so reliant on technology, and technology can do some great things. You know, we can look up where to go with Google Maps, and we can call friends and family, and call emergency services. That's worthless if you can't charge your phone. So this thing can charge an iPhone like six or seven times. Um, so it's a great, great something to have in your vehicle, and it comes with a car charger. So definitely a good option to have. And that's one thing about technology, and I, I actually meant to talk about this a little bit before. You know, we live, for the past 50 years, we've really relied on technology, but before that time, we knew a lot of the basic skills to survive. We've gotten away from it because everything is so convenient, and really everything's provided for us. We can go by the store, we can just pick it up. We were, I was laughing the other week, I, I bought a little address book, because I have a phone, and they're hard to find, by the way, a little address book, because everybody has their contact list. Well, what if you were out of town, out of state, somewhere, and you drop your phone in a bathroom water, in your water, and you need to get in touch with someone? Do you have phone numbers? Now, years ago, before cell phones, I, you know, I remember numbers off the top of my head. I figured it out. I really thought it through. I know my wife's number, and that's it. I barely knew my own number. <laughs> well, if something happened, because I don't call myself, okay? But, you know, if anything happened to your phone, and somebody, I know I did a little video about it because I thought it was that important, and somebody said, well, that's dumb. You can just download it on iCloud. And I was like, that's the mentality that we have, unfortunately. But, yes, you can, but, you know, What's the big deal is you can't download it if you don't have a phone, you know, or you don't have a, a, a source to get to it. So, you know, the thing is, is thinking about technology. I mean, years ago with water, I mean, I mean, being able to get well water, being able to, you know, and a lot of the things about, you know, where we are, it's really important not to rely super on technology, but because we have conveniences like that, you can continue to go because it's very convenient, obviously. Uh, so the next thing on there are multi-tools. Um, these are a point of contention for a lot of people. And the reason is multi-tools don't do anything really well. But they do a lot of things pretty well. So you have a compact tool that has, uh, a lot of them will have saw blades, multiple knife blades, pliers, screwdrivers, can openers, bottle openers, all kinds of different tools in one little compact thing. Maybe it's the most, not, not the most ergonomic or comfortable or sturdy version of it, but it's a version of it. So you have all that in one compact little piece. So we have a couple of them on the list. Um, Leatherman's obviously the big name in multi-tools, and they make great stuff. They make a, a bunch of different versions, but you know, on the very most basic level, you know, just a little guy with pliers on it, and you've got your knife, and you've got your scissors, and all that kind of stuff. And then on the high end, basically a larger version of that. So you've got nice full-size pliers that you could actually get under your hood and work around on your car if you had to, wire strippers and files and all that kind of stuff. So again, it's not going to do anything super well, but it's going to do enough stuff okay. Um, so it's a good tool to have if you're only going to take one tool. And if you don't have any tools, it's a blessing to have. <laughs> First day, Don had already kind of talked about. Um, you want to go into that a little bit more in depth? Uh, first aid is really important uh, because, and we, you know, we have emergency care. We have all these things, but really knowing how to treat someone, giving the just basic medical attention, and um, you know, you can bleed to death in no time. It, it's medical is so important in the rule of threes that it's it just carries through the whole thing because you could hurt yourself at any moment. Uh, having a really basic kit like this. You know, being able to use feet in your shirt if you needed to wrap a wound or, or, you know, if you've broken your arm. But um, having the right medical kit. One of the things about gloves in particular, and that's just a, a kind of a focus. And for a long time, I was always like, well, if I have gloves, I mean, if it's my kid hurt, why do I need gloves? I'm not worried about any kind of blood-borne illness or if it's somebody I know really close. But the one key about having a glove is not only protects you, but if you're doing something for somebody else in a bad situation, a lot of times your hands are dirty. So you're protecting them. Or even if it's for you, you're protecting yourself. So in a high stress situation, things can get really rough. And so having a really good uh, medical kit, really it's vital. It's just vital. I was, um, I was down in the woods below our house doing some work with this knife. And I had all my gear, my bags, I was doing 
couple of different things and I pulled this nut. It was hard to pull out of the sheath and when I pulled it, I just went and I cut across my hand. And I mean, it was bleeding like crazy. Well, I was down at the bottom of this thing and I had on these white pants or these really light khaki pants and they were just covered. And Shannon was gone, the kids were gone and you know, I wrapped it up, grabbed all that stuff and had to go up this real long hill. Well, thank goodness my neighbors happened to be at home. And she had steery strips and everything, you know, and she came over and cleaned it out and took care of it. But, you know, you just never know when something can happen, you know, very quickly. So, in any time. But while you're out on the road, it's extremely important that you have something like this. Doesn't he have great stories? Yeah, all great stories. <laughs> have stories. They're all true. Yeah, if you, work in a, if you work in a store that uh, sells knives, it's very important to have a good first aid kit. Did they stop something on the building? Probably. <laughs> We'll take a look at that later. Uh, signaling. So, have any of you ever seen the show, what is it, I Shouldn't Be Alive, I think it's called? Naked and Afraid. Or Naked and Afraid, yeah. <laughs> any of those kind of shows. Everybody's seen the kind of shows, or a lot of people seen the kind of shows where a guy goes over an embankment, or down into a ditch, and he's stuck in his vehicle, and he's got 10,000 cars going by him all day long, but he has no way to signal to him. So the most basic way of signaling to somebody, especially when they're out of line of sight, is sound. So something that's a nice loud whistle, like a jet screen, this thing puts out 122 decibels when you blow into it nice and hard. It's loud. And you blow into it a few times, people are going to get curious. Um, so signaling to people if, if you're in a bad situation, finding people if they're in a bad situation, you've got things that are built in to... to um, Compasses, mirrors, so you can use light, reflect it around, and, and signal people. Just to let people know where you are, find out where they are. So signaling is is really important. So these blankets with the orange international uh, distress call. So you know, being able to, but you got to make some funky movements to make sure they know something's wrong. But you know, it'll it'll definitely attract attention. It's good to be able to let people know where you are if you or they are in a bad situation. Um, dust mask we have on here and. This is kind of an extreme example. Not many people are going to be in this situation any times in their lives. But 9-11, uh, I mean, you read about the stories where the first responders or even people that were on site that were going to help these people, breathing in all that stuff. And you got burning buildings, buildings and other things that are burning. Um, breathing that in is not very good. You know, a lot of these guys have long-term health issues because of this stuff. So even basic, as basic as a bandana, just to be able to keep those particulates out of your mouth and out of your lungs. And on the higher end, you know, if you can go get, like one of the higher end, go to Home Depot and get, you know, a $15, $20 yeah. dust mask just to filter out the finer stuff, um, definitely a, a good thing to have in, in your bag. And two, the bandana has a, a million uses. In fact, I did a video a while back where it was just 40 uses for a bandana. So this is just a great thing to have in your bag at all times. Medication, that's going to be up to you guys individually. Now you've got the big things that are probably a good idea for everybody to have. Your Imodium AD, your Ibuprofen, your antihistamines, that kind of stuff. This camera just went out. It went out? We got, we got two other ones going. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, but uh, any medications that are essential. You know, if you're on blood pressure medication or heart medication or anything like that, a lot of people carry them. But I've talked to a lot of people that don't. You know, they just take them when they get home. Keep a few spares in your bag. And that's one of the big things. Make sure... What's up? Um, we got caught at work this last ice storm, and a buddy of mine's on uh, blood pressure medication. And he usually carries everything that you just mentioned, but he only takes that once a day. And that was the first time in recent history that we were stuck for 36 hours. And he was like, I don't have my blood pressure medication. Yep. There was nowhere to go get it. Yep. And it was... It's starting to become an issue. Yep. Thankfully, it didn't fully go to that. But just my my wife's a teacher, and then you know, kids they were stuck at school and they don't have enough insulin. They're diabetic. You know, any, any of that kind of stuff. If it's essential to your life, make sure you have it on you. Make sure you have several days worth. Of it. Yeah, my uh, father-in-law just had. He was on blood uh, thinner, and they told him, "Said you stay on this blood thinner, don't come off of it." Well, he's very stubborn, and he just decided he wasn't going to take it. And within two days, he had a stroke. I mean, a massive stroke. And the new blood thinners that they're using, they don't, like Coumadin kind of hangs around. Some of this stuff doesn't. 
So, yes, if you're on medication, especially newer medications, because they're making them to where they'll get out of your system quicker if they need to change it. So it's very vital, very vital. If you go to like a CVS and they have aluminum uh, tubes that have no ring mm -hmm. as, as to your keychain. And I, I carry mine on a keychain, so I always carry two days. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I never use it. It's always there. Ah, oh, smart. We have those. I mean, even if you just get a, a basic little poly bag that you can throw in your backpack or your or wherever, just make sure you have it on you. Um, sanitation. You know, a lot of people don't talk about bodily functions, but we all do them. And if you're in your car or somewhere like that, you want a way to keep it away from you. So garbage bags, plastic bags, toilet paper, zip ties, um, water bottles, you know, empty Coke bottles and stuff like that. Just a way to take care of any kind of waste. Um, you, don't, you don't want to sit around with that. That's no fun. Uh, <laughs> family gear. You know, we talked about essential medications. If you have kids, you know, I have a two-year-old daughter. She's potty trained now, but when she was in diapers, it'd be pretty unfortunate to have a, a kid for a couple of days without any diapers to put her in. So diapers, I talked about pets, so pet food, um, any stuff for your loved ones that they may need, just any essentials that, that you're going to have to have to, to be able to operate comfortably. The water treatment, we touched on this a little while ago. At the very most basic level, especially in Georgia, you know, out in the south, desert southwest, it's a little bit harder to find water. It's not around here. Chances are there's at least a puddle. You know, there's creeks and rivers and ponds and lakes all through these neighborhoods, everywhere pretty much on the east coast. So it's pretty easy to get to a water source. When you get there, you don't want to drink out of it and get Giardia or Cryptosporidium or any bacteria or anything like that, because they can pretty quickly mess you up and keep you messed up for a long time. I don't know how many of you watched Survivor Man, but Les Stroud, he got, I think it was Giardia, I want to say. And he was battling, I want to say, like 6 to 12 months. So this stuff stays in your system a really long time, and it's really hard to get rid of. Um, you want to avoid that. So at the most basic level, even a, a small filter like this that you can just stick in the water and drink the water out of, MicroPure, these are chemicals. Um, I prefer filters over chemicals personally. Chemicals are smaller and lighter, but I like my water to look and taste like water, so I want to get all that stuff out of it. So filters are nice for that. Chemicals will kill everything in water though, so that's nice. And then at the high end, you've got your uh, Catadyme Pocket Micro Filter. Most of the filters on the market are about 250 uh, uh, gallons that they're good for. This thing is good for 13,000 gallons. So incredible battery life is pretty much the only one you need to buy for your entire life. Um, so super battery life on this. It is also the most expensive one we sell. I think it's the most expensive filter on the market. But um, no batteries. No, no, no batteries. Did I say battery life? Well, I what I said. Hang on, flashlight. Working too long. He's got too many flashlights. <laughs> I've had, I've had too many Red Bulls. Is my problem. Um, so yeah, thirteen thousand gallons on that. So great filter life on that. Um, so, fire starting, of course, fire kits. You know, one of the things I have is just a fire kit, and we've got, let's see, we've got, there's some lighters and stuff. Having lighters, matches, of course, there's some tea light candles. Here's some different fire starting uh, methods. Uh, and I'll tell you one in particular that's just really great, which is not something that we have here, it's a homemade, but just Vaseline and a cotton ball. Great fire starter. But having multiple ways to start fire is important because if you've ever started a fire or tried to start a fire, especially in harsh conditions,